First thing he's doing is using four inch. Aren't those four six. inch or six inch? Six inch. Six, six inch staples. It's the first thing he's doing to secure it. Morning, y'all. It's Lippy. I'm out in the garden. It's Saturday. Yeah, can you tell? <laughs> and it's time to feed potatoes. We got a lot going on today. We're working on the greenhouse. And as I get to a segment, I stop in the garden and I go and film for y'all. That way you don't miss a step of how he's securing it. But right now, let's talk about potatoes. Potatoes right now, the first month to two, they need their nitrogen. The last two months, we start incorporating the phosphorus as well as the potassium. That's when I start going to a two, let's see, I think the one I have in there is a seven, 10, 17. As you can see, I'm trying to put in that potassium. That's where I wanna concentrate, but that's on down the road. Right now, it's nitrogen. And I'm gonna show you what I use I'm also gonna show you what a lot of you guys use, and I've used it too, that's why I have it. It's just not my first go-to. Especially, this is the year that I need to yield, Lord willing, as much as we can. So, let me say first, there's nothing wrong with my second choice, which is probably a lot of y'all's choice. It's organic. My other that I'm using is not but I've used it too many years and it works instantly. As where the secondary, you just better have patience. So let me show y'all. Now this is what I use, the high yield, straight nitrogen. Many of you are familiar with this organic blood meal. Again, it is 12% nitrogen. The difference is this is a low, slow release. It takes a while for it to break down. Our rain we're getting in tonight, by tomorrow, these things are gonna Cadillac, okay? That's just Lippy's choice. But they're both 12%. And there's nothing wrong with either or, it's just your comfort zone, your preference. This is my top preference. That's my second. So now let's look and see. And what I did is I just took a handful and I went underneath and I just sprayed it out. Remember, these are the red Pontiacs. These are the small Yukon Golds. And let's look at these large Yukons. Remember, they wasn't coming on. Well, they are, but mm, nothing like that, y'all. And here's the other bed because I ran out of room. And I want to say these are the uh, small Yukons. So I just fed them. And I also fed my onions. The wind is just laying them over. I come out every day and have to straighten them up. So now I've decided just, you know what, I'm going to leave them. They'll still bulb, maybe a little sideways, but we'll see. My easy straw came in, so I put just a thin, I mean a thin, y'all, layer. See? It looks thick, but it's really thin. So the celery is now covered. And I don't remove this. Over winter, this will break down. No no weeds, no nothing. Well, hello. Well, hello. And I did my strawberries. If I'd have had my strawberry box built, yeah, they would be in a different location. They're doing so well, but this is the only year that I'm gonna let them grow here. Remember, we just needed a spot to put them in. So, come this fall, we'll have to move them and that'll be fine. But I want y'all to look at this. It really is loaded, guys. Now, let's harvest some radishes. Look at that big boy. Holy cow. Now, look at this, y'all. 
nice and quite a few more growing. Here's our mid-morning snack, y'all. Look how big. So what you doing, bud? Cutting timbers. Put around the bottom of this greenhouse, stake it down, hold the plastic down, try to keep Toto from blowing it off. There you go. Let me show y'all. He's working on this side. And here's the doorway. So that's the second thing that you did after you put those six inch staples. Yeah, I stapled it with six inch staples to get it tight, tight, hold it down. Then these go on, then I'm gonna drill holes and I've got some rebar. I'm gonna weld some washers on the top. Drill oh, the holes. tell them why you have to dig your welder out. Oh, tell yeah. them what happened or what we found out. Well, I gotta go find the welder. I did not want to uh, take that defeat and hassle of digging in that shed. Yeah, because it's still boxed up. Find everything. it in the hood. So uh, I said, oh, I'll just get some uh, cable clamps, put on the top of the rebar, drive them down to the cable clamps hit. Cable clamps for, uh, you can use a 5 16 cable clamp on a 3 8 rebar. And the cheapest $3. We found. And 79 cents we went a to piece three stores. for cable clamps. I said, not going to happen. And how many did we need? Needed 20 of them. 20 so, of them at $4 a piece. Then I said, well, I'll just use some hose clamps. <laughs> I went over there. Just the hose clamps to put around a 3 8 rebar. $2.79 a piece. I said, now, so round that up I to probably three got 100 of them out there in a box. If I'm going to dig for them, I might well get the weld machine. That's right. So I've got some washers. I'll weld them on and... Right. Wasn't what we wanted to do because, y'all, we're not unpacked with the shop stuff, but I just can't believe the price. 20 it's, hooks would have been 80 everything's bucks. Everything's expensive. Yeah. Yep. A little salt on it. What? It don't get no better, y'all. It's sweet. There's no bite. She about to get on my last nerve. I'm just saying. Now it's time to feed the strawberries. And this is what Lippy uses. I love this stuff, y'all. It doesn't smell good. But like, like I said, I don't know if I told y'all or not. We've got rain. It's been sprinkling a little bit. It's hazy. But we got quite a bit of rain coming. So I take advantage. When I know it's going to rain and it's around my fertilizing date, I utilize rainwater. So I'm gonna drop the camera and I'm gonna show you just how I do it. I'm gonna let this rain go ahead and put it on into the dirt. Oh yeah, y'all can see. And I'm, I'm generous with this now, y'all. Oh, I see a wasp, bud. Already. It wants them fig trees. I don't know if y'all know that, but a wasp is what fertilizes your fig trees. Sure does. This stuff stinks. <laughs> but it's good. So I do go heavy handed. I'm not worried about this being on the leaves. I do kind of shake the leaves off. Uh, like I said, it's going to rain. It'll wash it off anyway. You know, I try to be careful, but there we go. And that's all it is to it. Let's see, we fertilized the onions. We did the potatoes. Um, I did the uh, celery, all with that 12%. So I guess now it's time to, we'll go into the garage, see what's happening. What I haven't brought out, they're still small. Uh, look and see what's germinating. So we'll do that because he's taking a break because I'm going to show y'all what we got a hold of. Mm -hmm. Man, I tell you what, the blessings. We don't take them for granted either. But yeah, our, uh, our grapevine is about five minutes away. 
and then I'll show y'all. Y'all look at this. 56 20 gallon nutrition buckets. 56 of them. And that was the blessing I was telling you about. Tell you what, there is some fine folks we live around. We all help each other. Every household has a trait. Um, and that's what a community is, at least in my definition. Where we're at within a mile radius, we have some of the most amazing, most kind, giving people as we do whatever they need in Buddy's trait or what we're able to do. So I think I have changed my mind on the 18 beds that's left with all the wood. We will still be building beds, but I think I'm gonna shift because this is so much easier to go ahead and get these prepped, get some dirt in them and save that wood for some other projects. Cause guys, this is gonna do just as good as if he built a three by four raised bed. Um, he can put these up on a platform for me and it'll also keep the vegetables separated. Um, so then I don't have to be too concerned with companion planting and then swapping. I can just label these and know what not to put in next year. But it's a thought. Um, but right now I say, let's do about, I need eight beds built instead of 18 and then incorporate these 56 salt buckets. Now we're in the garage. These are the ones that I will be taking out to the greenhouse. Today's Saturday, so probably tomorrow. Now you'll see there's a poblano. This is a California bell. Here's a banana. And then throughout. Okay, in this white tub, we have Senna candlestick. Y'all, this is a must have. I hope they do well. We got these from seeds from our neighbor around the corner. So we want to have quite a few of these. Now you see we have germination. And this is that new potting mix that was gifted to me. And this is what we have planted. And it looks like every one of them has germinated at least one to two of each. And I'm gonna hold the camera so you can see. Now here we have squash and we have cucumbers. Guys, I've got to get these out. They have gone crazy. And here's some I planted about four days ago and we've got some germination and that is the roaster and the San Mazzano. So we do have some germination. Something I normally don't like to do is repot cucumbers. But I didn't have a choice. Y'all, I got you sitting up on a bucket. <laughs> I left the tripod out there in the garden. <laughs> I said, how oh, arms too tired. What am I gonna put them on? Yeah, y'all on a bucket. One of them little buckets. But this is not something I like to do with cucumbers, squash, zucchini but now i will direct sow as well i always direct sow cucumber squash zucchini as a backup i just i like doing that because these are very delicate um i mean but look they were bending over because i made a mistake when i had to change out the potting mix and i went to my bricks well, I used a 72 cell. It's what I had. That was not smart because there's some peppers in there. There's some tomatoes in there. Well, of course, these germinate 10 times faster, okay? Yeah, and they were touching the dome. So don't make that mistake. I was trying to condense my space. I knew better but I did it anyway, and I'll show you what I normally use. Let me get it out of here. Y'all love my filming, don't y'all? Okay, I have a bunch of these, hundreds, 
because I used to sell plants. Well, normally what I do is I will pop these into, well, I normally have my scissors, but it is a 12 pack, but I normally do a six pack and I'll cut it down the middle. That way I can pull that out once they germinate and that allows me to do multiple things as peppers and tomatoes, uh, flowers, whatever that is. So I know that if I did a six pack of those gherkin cucumbers, then I would just take this six pack out and set it in a tray, a watering tray. I wouldn't have to disturb. And that's what I had to do. Um, and I knew better, but I did it anyway, so we're gonna see. But I always direct so as a backup. But y'all that are about to start, if you can find, now they're gonna be like little 12 packs, but they have a rib down the middle where you can cut. Definitely do that if you're trying to condense your space like I was, this was a 72 cell tray. Well, I can still put just as many in that tray, only they're gonna be in six packs. I used to do it all the time and I didn't follow my own rule, but that's okay. Um, we're just gonna see, I need to take these out, water them, look how pretty but delicate. Now this is the Space Master 80 Cucumber. And I believe that's a house tool, if I'm not mistaken. Most of these are. The Gherkins um, is a house tool. I do have a Johnny in here. I don't remember which one it is. I have to look in my book. But speaking of the book, I will have to write in that I repot it. I never put a space there for cucumbers and squash and stuff, but I'm gonna have to put a space now for that because that's what I just did. Now, Buddy is out working on the rebar. He's just cutting it right now. I don't know if we're gonna get to that this evening. So tomorrow we'll move to that. I'll film, but I need to get this video uploaded because I gotta clean up and get us something to eat. But he was just doing the landscape timbers. So you haven't missed anything, and then we'll go to that rebar tomorrow. Because I think I hear him out there cutting. And I don't go around the welder machine, because that's what he's going to have to do. Because remember, those clamps he was talking about was four bucks a piece, so he's modifying. But because I don't have a helmet, I can't very well put the camera on. But all he's going to do is just cut them, and then he will tell y'all what size length that he cut them in. So you won't miss anything, but I'm gonna protect my eyes because I don't have anything to shield with. So I'm gonna get these watered and we'll see y'all tomorrow. But what do you think of our buckets? I'm gonna tell you what, buddy rounded that corner. I was just giggle. I'm telling you what, I was just, where do you get them? I was tickle pink, guys. That was a blessing. So, tomorrow Sunday, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. And the ones that's following me, today was your feeding day. So, make sure you're doing your feeding. And we'll talk about beans tomorrow. I'll try to make a mental note. They haven't come up yet. But there's something that we feed our beans totally different. So, I'll try to make a mental note. So I can share that and y'all can write it down if you're not at that point. So as always, stay safe. I got something in my eye. Stay well and God bless. And I will see y'all tomorrow. I might need to go get some Visine. That fan that I've got blowing, it blew some dirt in my eyes what it was. All right, see y'all tomorrow, y'all.